Okay, Coach Burt, Ultimate Soccer Coaching, back again. And today we're going to talk about some uh, possession activities and some things that, that I like to do uh, to kind of help our team uh, be better at moving the ball around, playing quicker, and also utilize some passing combinations. Um, if you haven't looked at our circle drill video, uh, go ahead and, and take a look at that now. This is a, an excellent video. This is a great uh, series of activities to use really as a warm-up as we move into possession. Not only does it get the players moving and passing, it also works one-two passing combinations and third-man runs. So something you want to look at because we're going to utilize some of those same skills uh, in this next activity. So it makes for a great progression from a dynamic warm-up to the circle drills and then into this uh, particular possession activity. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a 5v5v5 five five, uh, v five type activity. So we're going to have, uh, let's say, a red team made up of five players. Uh, and throw one more. Um, you have maybe a blue team. It just depends on whatever color pennies you have. So we'll say a blue team. And then we'll have a, a yellow team. So we'll get everybody on the board here. Okay, and you really don't need a neutral player for this. Um, you can do that just with the 5v5v5. So a couple of different ways to do this. Um, what, one of the things we like to do is just to start out with a very simple game where two teams play, um, they have the ball, five players defend. So you start out, okay, blue and red begin with the ball, and they're going to play possession. I put them on two touch um, if they're you know, able to handle that. You can put them on three touch if maybe they're like a U11, U10 team, they're not quite ready for, for two. Um, but we recommend you know, try to get to two as soon as possible. And if you really want to challenge the players, put them on a single touch, put them on one touch. Um, bear in mind when you do one touch that it's going to be much more physically demanding. The players, I mean, the, the movement, the support that's required in one touch is uh, much, much more than playing a two touch game. But they have a two to one advantage uh, attacker versus defenders. They're going to be playing 10 versus 5 which is really an ideal opportunity to work on one touch uh, passing. So we'll start out red and blue with the ball. They're going to play against yellow. As soon as yellow wins the ball, uh, whichever team was responsible for the loss. So if, if red makes a bad pass, yellow intercepts, now red becomes the defending team and we have the blue and the yellow team playing against red. And you can play this you know, for five minutes, seven minutes, however long you want to do it. Um, you, can, you can work that activity. And then once they've kind of gotten warmed up, everybody's ready to go, then we can go into a, a series where we're sort of keeping score. And again, it's, it's important, and we've talked about this before, to add a competitive element to as many of the activities as you possibly can. So it takes a simple possession where the goal is keep, to keep possession, um, and then we're going we're gonna to ratchet it up a notch. So what we like to do here is we'll start out with red and blue. Uh, they're on the attacking side. Yellow's defending. And you can play a two- to three-minute game. And you're going to keep track of the number of com completed passes that the red team and the blue team make. So if yellow were to win the ball, um, they're on unlimited touches at that point, and they're going to try to keep it as long as possible. So just to kind of recap, um, red and blue versus yellow for three minutes. Anytime yellow wins the ball, they're on unlimited touches to try to keep the ball as long as possible uh, and, and kill off time. Uh, red and blue, they're on two touch for this particular activity. Um, so you run it for three minutes, and you have blue and red, whatever their score is. So that counts as, you know, let's say they get 35 completed passes. And they're, they're not consecutive. Uh, you just start the count over. So if they're, they get eight in a row, then they lose possession. They get it back. They get another five in a row. Now they're at 13. So it's cumulative, um, but not consecutive. Um, so yellow would have 35 again, against them. Then you would take blue team, blue would defend, and you would have red and yellow play against blue. And you'd go for the same two to three minutes, um, and then you'd have, you know, let's say 40 passes uh, completed against blue. And then you'd bring the red in, and they would play for three minutes on defense, while uh, blue and yellow are the attacking teams, and, you know, they give up, you know, say 28 passes. They did a really good job. So the worst team was blue, who gave up 40. So you would have some sort of, uh, some sort of work. Uh, maybe it's you know ten push-ups, ten sit-ups, you know ten jumps, whatever you want to do, just so there's a little bit of a consequence um, and there's a you know a real desire to win. So that that is a great way to take this activity and make it competitive. Now, if you want to really stretch the players a little bit more, you can do what we talked about in the circle drills with the one-two passes. And so you can make it so only a wall pass.
counts as one. So if blue has the ball here and he plays red and then he gets around the defender and receives a pass back from red, that counts as one. Every other pass is merely keeping possession. You don't get any points for that. You only get points for one, two passes. So that, that's a variation. You can then also go into a, a third man run sequence where you know red plays blue uh, right here. He makes a run. Blue goes to red, who then hits this guy back. And there you go, there's your third man run. So you can do that as another progression. You could play a series of two minute games where the goal is just cumulative passes. Then you could follow that up with a, a series of two minute games where everybody has a chance to defend, but only one, two passes count. And then you can move it on where only third man run counts. And there's tons of different ways to do it. You could, you know, you can count it so that, you know, a regular pass is one, that whenever they make a one, two pass, maybe that's three points because that's a little bit more difficult. Uh, and then when they're able to make a third man run, maybe that's five points. So if you have a limited amount of time, um, but you want to get into some of these other uh, types of progressions, then you can just assign point values. Um, so anyway, there you go. Um, if you're viewing this on our YouTube channel, I want to encourage you to click the subscribe button above. Uh, that's going to get you in the loop. So whenever we're adding new activities, new drills, new coaching tips, you're going to be notified of that. Uh, if you're viewing this on our blog, you're going to see a link below to our YouTube channel. And again, I encourage you to go check it out. Uh, go to our YouTube channel, subscribe. Um, you know, while you're at it, check out our Facebook page, Twitter page, uh, and get in the loop. And we're excited to have you uh, on board with us here at Ultimate Soccer Coaching. Have a great day.